Today, we're diving into the murky depths of American automotive history to uncover the five worst pickup trucks ever to hit the roads. From design disasters to mechanical nightmares, these trucks have earned their place on our list. So buckle up because we're about to take a bumpy ride through some of the biggest flops in us pickup truck history. Ford Pinto Pickup, 1971, 1980, Kicking off our list is the infamous Ford Pinto pickup. Born from the controversial Pinto platform, this truck suffered from a plethora of safety issues, including a tendency for the gas tank to explode upon impact, not exactly the kind of feature you want in a pickup truck. The Ford Pinto pickup shared its platform and many design elements with the Pinto sedan. It featured a unibody construction with a front engine, rear wheel drive layout. The pickup bed, located at the rear, provided limited cargo space compared to traditional full-size pickups of the era. In terms of engine options, the Pinto pickup initially offered a range of inline. Four engines, including the 1.6 and 2.0 units. Later models also offered a 2.3 engine. These engines were known for their modest power output and fuel efficiency typical of compact vehicles of the time. One of the most significant issues plaguing the Ford Pinto pickup, as with its sedan counterpart, was its safety record. The Pinto gained infamy due to its susceptibility to fuel tank ruptures and fires in rear end collision. The placement of the fuel tank behind the rear axle made it vulnerable to impact, leading to tragic consequences in certain accidents. The safety concerns surrounding the Ford Pinto pickup led to numerous controversies and legal battles for Ford Motor Company. Internal memos revealed that Ford was aware of the safety risks during the vehicle's development, but chose not to address them due to cost consideration. In 1978, Ford issued a recall for certain Pinto models, including the pickup variant to address fuel system defects that could lead to fires. However, by this time, the damage to the Pinto's reputation had already been done. Next on our list is the Chevrolet Love, short for light utility vehicle. Despite its promising name, this truck suffered from reliability issues and lackluster performance. It failed to make a dent in the competitive small truck market dominated by Japanese imports. The Chevrolet Love, also known as the Isuzu Faster or Isuzu Skib, was a compact pickup truck produced by Isuzu Motors and rebadged and sold by Chevrolet in North America. It aimed to capitalize on the growing demand for small trucks during the 1970s fuel crisis. The Chevrolet Louvre featured a utilitarian design with a compact body and a relatively simple interior. It came in various body styles, including single cab, extended cab, and even a chassis cab configuration for specialized application. The bed lengths varied depending on the cab style, offering versatility for different cargo needs. Under the hood, the Louvre initially offered a choice of four cylinder engines, including a 1.8 and a 2.0, both sourced from Isuzu. Later models introduced a larger 2.3 engine. These engines provided adequate power for light duty hauling and commuting while delivering good fuel efficiency, which was a key selling point during the fuel crisis era. The Chevrolet Love was praised for its reliability and durability, traits commonly associated with Japanese built vehicles of the time. Its robust construction and simple mechanical components contributed to its reputation for longevity, making it a popular choice for budget, conscious buyers, and fleet operators. In terms of performance, the Love's small displacement engines offered modest power output and acceleration suitable for urban driving and light hauling tasks. While it wasn't the most powerful truck in its class, it excelled in efficiency and low operating costs, appealing to a wide range of consumers. The Chevrolet Love, despite its popularity and success in certain aspects, 
is often considered one of the worst trucks in American history. The Dodge Rampage was based on the Chrysler L platform, which it shared with the Dodge Omni and Plymouth Horizon, both compact cars. This platform provided the Rampage with front wheel drive and a compact footprint, making it maneuverable in urban environment. One of the Rampage's distinguishing features was its unibody construction, which contributed to its car-like handling characteristics. It featured a unibody structure with a front engine layout and a cargo bed integrated into the rear. Despite its compact size, the Rampage offered a surprisingly spacious interior for passengers, with seating for two occupants. However, its cargo bed, while functional for light-duty hauling, lacked the capacity and versatility of traditional pickup trucks. The Dodge Rampage initially offered a choice of two engines, a 2.2 liter inline four and a 2.5 liter inline four. These engines, while adequate for daily commuting and light hauling tasks, lack the power and towing capacity expected of traditional pickup trucks. The Rampage's performance was modest, reflecting its focus on fuel efficiency and urban usability rather than outright power. While it offered respectable fuel economy for its time, its performance failed to impress consumers looking for a more capable and versatile truck. Despite its innovative concept and practical design, the Dodge Rampage failed to resonate with consumers for several reasons. Limited utility, the Rampage's compact size and modest payload capacity limited its appeal to buyers who required a more capable and versatile truck for hauling and towing tasks. Unconventional styling, the Rampage's unconventional styling characterized by its car-like front end and integrated cargo bed, failed to attract buyers accustomed to the rugged aesthetics of traditional pickup trucks. Market competition. The Rampage faced stiff competition from established players in the compact truck segment, such as the Ford Ranger and Chevrolet S10, which offered greater utility, performance, and brand recognition. Perception. Despite its practicality and fuel efficiency, the Rampage struggled to overcome the perception that it was neither a true car nor a true truck, leaving it in a niche market with limited appeal. The Dodge Rampage was an ambitious attempt by Dodge to offer a versatile and efficient vehicle that bridged the gap between cars and pickup trucks. However, its limited utility, unconventional styling, and stiff competition ultimately led to its downfall, relegating it to obscurity in automotive history. While it may not have achieved commercial success, the Rampage remains an interesting footnote in the evolution of American automotive design and innovation. Dubbed the gentleman's pickup, the GMC Caballero tried to combine luxury with utility. Unfortunately, its awkward styling and underwhelming performance failed to resonate with buyers, leading to its eventual demise. The Gemesee Caballero, produced from 1978 to 1987, was a variant of the Chevrolet El Camino, both of which were classified as coupe utility vehicles, blending characteristics of both cars and trucks. While the Caballero had its unique features and qualities, it often finds its place among lists of the worst trucks due to several factors. Styling and design issues, the Caballero's styling was polarizing with its front end resembling that of a traditional car while the rear featured a pickup bed. This unconventional design led to criticism from some consumers who found it neither fully practical as a truck nor stylish as a car, resulting in limited appeal in the market limited payload and towing capacity. Despite its truck-like appearance, the Caballero's payload and towing capacity were relatively modest compared to dedicated pickup trucks of the era. This limited its utility for tasks such as hauling heavy loads or towing trailers, which were common requirements for truck buyers. 
performance and reliability concerns, the Caballero was offered with a range of engines, including V6 and Vate options, but some models suffered from performance and reliability issues. These issues included engine malfunctions, transmission problems, and durability concerns, which affected the vehicle's overall dependability and ownership experience. Market competition. The Caballero faced tough competition from both domestic and foreign manufacturers, including traditional pickup trucks from Chevrolet, Ford, and Dodge, as well as imported models like the Toyota Hilux and Nissan Datsun. Compared to these rivals, the Caballero struggled to offer the same level of performance, versatility, and reliability leading to its decline in sales and popularity. Declining sales and discontinuation. Over its production run, sales of the Caballero gradually declined as consumer preferences shifted towards more conventional pickup trucks and SUVs. Despite efforts to update the design and features, including a transition to front-wheel drive platforms in later years, the Caballero failed to reverse its fortunes and was eventually discontinued in 1987. The Chevrolet Esser Super Sport Roadster, produced from 2003 to 2006, was a unique and unconventional vehicle that blended elements of a pickup truck with those of a retro-styled convertible Roadster. While it garnered attention for its distinctive design and innovative features, the SR is often regarded as one of the worst trucks in America due to several reasons. Polarizing design. The Chevrolet Assessor's design was polarizing, combining retro styling cues reminiscent of 1950s era trucks with modern mechanical components. While some appreciated its nostalgic aesthetic, Others found its design to be quirky and impractical, lacking the traditional functionality expected from a pickup truck. Limited utility, despite its pickup truck classification, the SSR's practicality was compromised by its retractable hardtop roof mechanism, which occupied space in the cargo bed when stowed. This limited the Esser's ability to carry large or bulky items, reducing its usefulness as a true pickup truck for hauling cargo. High price tag. The Chevrolet SSR was marketed as a premium, niche vehicle, commanding a significantly higher price than traditional pickup trucks of similar size and capability. Its luxury features and limited production numbers contributed to its high price tag, making it unattainable for many prospective buyers. Underwhelming performance. While the SR featured a powerful Vate engine, its performance did not always match its sporty appearance. Some critics and enthusiasts found its acceleration and handling to be lackluster compared to other performance-oriented vehicles in its price range, leading to disappointment among buyers seeking a more dynamic driving experience, poor sales, and short production run. Despite initial hype and anticipation, sales of the Chevrolet SR failed to meet expectations. Its niche appeal and high price limited its market reach, resulting in sluggish sales figures. As a result, Production of the SSR was discontinued after just a few model years, making it a rare and relatively obscure vehicle in Chevrolet's lineup. Limited practicality. The Chevrolet SSR's combination of a convertible roof, two-seat configuration, and limited cargo space made it less practical for everyday use compared to traditional pickup trucks or even sports cars. Its niche appeal and specialized design features may have alienated potential buyers seeking a more versatile and functional vehicle. In summary, while the Chevrolet SSR offered a unique and distinctive driving experience, its unconventional design, limited utility, high price, and underwhelming performance contributed to its classification as one of the worst trucks in America.
Despite its cult following among enthusiasts, the SR's shortcomings ultimately outweighed its novelty and charm in the eyes of many consumers and automotive critics. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more videos like this one, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll stay updated on all our latest uploads and be the first to know when we release part two of this series. Don't miss out on more fascinating insights into automotive history and the world of trucks. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.